Today's video, I'm gonna teach you kind of the secret or the solution or the method to building good route combinations in Madden or college football every single year. Now, if you're watching this video, uh, I wanna let you know that we're gonna be dropping all of our offensive and defensive eBooks for both Madden 25 and college football 25 over on our school.com community page. It already has all of our Madden 24 offensive and defensive eBooks over there completely updated. And that's also going to be the way that we're gonna be releasing all of our eBooks going forward. It's a great little platform to help you become a better Madden or college football player. And if you wanna get access to all of the stuff over there, $10 will unlock all of the uh, content on the site. So if you wanna sign up to be a member over there, the link is gonna be down in the description. Now, one of the things that I think is kind of super slept on and just does not get explained a lot in Madden is kind of this concept we're gonna talk about today, and that is space in general. So. At the very basic kind of like level, good route combos in Madden provide space, are spaced out well, and they take advantage of space. And at times, they create space for your offense. So I'm going to set kind of some audibles here, and we're going to come out in my bunch strong offset. This full ebook is on the school.com community page. I actually just dropped a massive update to it as well, completely revamped it. Added in bunch tied in, trips tied in, bunch, really good, really good plays over there. So, okay. So to, to illustrate this as best as I possibly can, I'm gonna try to use some pictures or some zone coverage uh, in this look here. So essentially, if you think about it, and we're gonna base out of a cover four, but if you think about kind of defense in Madden in general, there are essentially about 10 to 15-ish spaces or spots that you can attack on the field. What I mean by that is, if you look here to the left side, there's the deep outside of the numbers, right? So there's, like you see here are the numbers, and there's basically like deep and outside of the numbers. There's deep between the numbers and hash marks, which is where this quarter would play. There's other, and then, and then basically you split the field directly in half, and kind of the same thing over here between the hash marks and the numbers. And then this plays kind of outside the numbers and deep. All right. Now, underneath, there's kind of five key areas. So there's the hard flat, which is going to be basically, again, the, the numbers to the sideline and about five yards and less, essentially. There's the vertical hook area, which is from the numbers to the hash mark right which and again about that five yard ish mark and then there's the three rec hook or the hook curl area which is essentially directly over the center okay and then the same thing is true on the right side here so there's the hook curl area and the three rec hook or the mid read and then there's these two key areas which is the vert hook from the hash mark to the numbers and then the hard flat area from the numbers outside so if you think about that, those are kind of like five key areas underneath that you can attack. There's also five kind of key areas deep that you can attack. We talked about it with the quarter. The quarter, also an underrated one, is the directly the middle third. You know, this would be like a post route would attack kind of this deep middle third area of the field. And then also you have kind of the same thing on the other side. Now, the same is also true in what I call, and I think this is the most important. So if you think about a cover four, and we use a hard flat to illustrate this a little better. So this is going to take away what I call the layup throws. The layup throws are basically like five, 10 yards and less. And they're these underneath kind of areas. That's what this is going to, this defense would take away that, okay? There's also what I call the three pointers or the, big play throws, which are the deep, and I, and I want to specify here by saying, by moving these guys back, the deep space that we just showed you, the five deep spaces. So there's five underneath spaces, there's five deep spaces, and where there's the most variation in Madden is the five underneath spaces. So just imagine it's essentially 10 yards and down, right? So you could look at it this way, but when you play hard flats, oftentimes it's gonna be more practically, it's gonna look more like what I'm about to show you, where these guys are kind of defending 
down in these little pockets super underneath, okay? And typically, of course, with one user defender, but in general, this is kind of how things would, would shape up. So where's the space at on this field? Well, there is from about five-ish yards, five to about 30 yards, really it's about that 10 to 30 yard range, there is a significant amount of space. So again, if the ball's on the 30, right, that means these, that means, you know, if I had a streak to clear out space, it would actually, these deep zones would actually run, continue to run super far back, okay? So the biggest point I wanna make here is as you can clearly see, the majority of space in the field against this defense, this basic coverage, is going to be in the intermediate area of the field. I call this the mid-range jumpers. If you think about an NBA basketball game, that is where the majority of points are, uh, especially by really good players. That's where I think the majority of skill becomes. So, what do I mean by what do I mean by that intermediate area? I mean between about ten to thirty yards and in those five spaces. So. For example, this cloud flat, this cloud flat will drop about uh, kind of in this in this area right here. Same thing over here, right? So this is kind of that intermediate, outside the numbers attacking area. If I was using zone drops, I could actually drop or shade up. That would bring these hook curls back super far, so they would play back in here, right? And so of course the the what's open obviously. And we'll show you real quick. You know, this is the middle, the deep intermediate middle. This is kind of the intermediate hook curl. And then the intermediate on the right as well was something like this. So in this example, the majority of space would be underneath. So the bottom line is there's about 15 spaces that we can actually practically attack. Now, what you want to do in terms of your, uh, in terms of your play calling is you want to constrain, you want to use your routes to attack spaces well in actual practical ways that you can manipulate the coverage. What do I mean by manipulate the coverage? Typically in Madden, that's going to mean high lowing the coverage or high lowing the space on the field that you want to attack. So let's use this, this concept here to the right side. Let's say I want to attack this right side of the field. What I want to do is I want to have a streak to kind of clear out zone. I want to have a, a corner, which is going to get to that between 10 to, 10 to 35, 40, 10 to 40 yard corner route. And then I'm going to have a below 10 yard flat route. So if we were to go back to the, the main coverage here, the layup would be the flat route. The three pointer would be the streak. And then the mid-range jumper is going to be the corner. So most oftentimes, as you'll see here, the corner is what's going to be open to the sideline. Now, again, I got to throw that a little bit better. But in general, that's, that's what we're trying to do. So now let's talk about the constraint that we are playing or the, const the constraint that we're putting on the defender. So the, the stress, the, the defender that we're stressing, I got, to, I got to work on my free form. The defender that we're stressing is really this flat defender. Because we're basically saying, based on how that right side slot corner defends us, we're either going to throw it to the flat or to the corner. Now, another variation of that is what I just showed you with the double corner. So the double corner is the same thing. The only difference is now we have a 15-ish, 20-ish yard corner route, a 35-yard corner route, and a clear out streak. We could also throw a flat route right here, all right? And what this does is it, again, constrains the defenders and we're able to attack. Now, let's talk about how you can complement your routes. The biggest thing here is understanding that most defenses are designed to allow you to throw intermediate routes. What that means is most coverages are basically designed to allow you to throw intermediate routes because those are the most difficult throws to be able to make consistently. However, in Madden, what a lot of people will do to kind of stop some of the things that we want to try to do is they will, what, they will do what's called stacking or flooding a side with zones, bracketing space. So instead of 
two defenders. Now we're going to add a third layer, which is going to be this deep flat. And then we're going to have a middle third. So as you see here to the right side, we have flooded this right side with zones. And what we've done is we've kind of allowed the back side of the play to be a little bit more vulnerable because we have, if you look at the numbers here, one, two, three, we have four plus the middle defender. So then what that means is we only have three defenders that we can play defense with on the left-hand side. This is why when you attack with the first thing I showed you, then you oftentimes want to come, want to come back with a play like dagger where we're now going to create a high low on that left side defender and attack kind of that intermediate space in the left side of the field. What this ultimately does to most people in terms of how they want to defend you is they're going to start to do what's called double flatting on both sides or double Mabel coverage. What this does is it places a low flat defender, an intermediate flat defender and a half defender. So if we just look at kind of how the flow of the coverage is going to play, where's the vulnerabilities in the defense? The vulnerabilities in the defense are basically from the numbers to the numbers. So a good route combination that's going to attack the numbers to the numbers is what I call a seams concept um, or a stick concept. Either one will be effective. So what we want to do is we want to have something like this play wide trail where we're going to drag the slot flat, the outside bunch receiver and ghost the running back. So if you look at what happens with this play, you're going to see here that we're able to create this kind of, for lack of a better word, triangle in the middle of the field where we, what we want to basically do with this is we want to attack that, those yellow zones, that, that space on the right side. So if you look here, this running back is kind of attacking that low vertical hook area of the field. This drag, even though it is going to eventually be a flat, it's really going to be thrown right in here. So again, kind of attacking that left side vertical hook area of the field. This tight end trail, if you look at it closely, is kind of attacking a little bit more of an intermediate vert hook or even a mid read. And then the same is true for the post. If you watch, he's kind of coming back over the middle of the field. So what this does is it puts the user in a significant amount of conflict. Another way that we can basically arrive at the same kind of play would be to go to the play Durham. And as you see here, we have this tight end wheel route. We're going to post our slot receiver. And then what we're going to do is with this motion out, we're actually going to put our running back on a wheel so that he's going to clear out space. And then we're going to drag our solo receiver. What this setup is going to do, again, this is specifically designed to be able to attack this defense right here. So the user has to make a choice. Am I going to go to the right side seam and take it away more so like a vert hook would? Or am I going to play more in the middle of the field like a mid read would, which would then leave that tight end wide open to the side? And we'll show you kind of what that looks like. Then on the back end of this, kind of same thing, we're reading kind of that quick throw, but as you see, the tight end is wide open if they don't go user him. So essentially what we're doing when we're utilizing these kind of double Mabel beaters is we're putting a lot of, we're putting routes together that are going to attack kind of that middle area of the field. Now, as far as putting complementary routes on the field, I do think this is important to talk about. Let's talk about having a concept side and a back side that you can work. One of the best examples of this is the double corner play because it's not a full field read. It's really we're looking at the right side here. So the best route that we can have on the field is really this backside drag. And the reason why this backside drag is going to be good is because if we think about how they're going to have to defend this with their user, once they see that we're running this double corner, they're going to have to go user that corner out. Otherwise, that's going to be wide open to the sideline. So that's going to take the user defender out of the middle of the field, and it's going to remove one of those underneath yellow zones. And as you see, we're able now to complement that with a backside route. What we would not want to do, and this is super important, we would not want to run, for example, a backside C route. And the reason why 
is because we're attacking the right side. Now we have to come back and read the left side and there's no route that's really going to help him get open. And a lot of times they can just play, play defense really, really well on that side. Now, the way we would do the same basic idea with like dagger, for example, dagger's a great example of this as well, because again, we're going to have this high low to the left sideline between the streak, the crosser and the drag. So the backside check down read really shouldn't be like a tight end corner, right? Because you only have one route and that route is going to just simply break over the middle and kind of sit where the user would be vacating if he was to go guard the deep crossing route. That is a super underrated thing that you need to understand. And again, the same thing applies with Durham. If you think about Durham, what you really have here is kind of a three key routes and then you have two clear out routes. You have this kind of snap throw wheel that's going to be really good to the flat. But let's say the user decides he's going to take that post that, again, takes somebody out of the middle of the field and the running back is going to be able to come under, underneath for a pretty nice play. In general, guys, the biggest tip I could give you for your complementary routes is almost always you want to be attacking one side of the field and then you want to have your check down route be coming over the middle of the field because if the user vacates the middle of the field, which is typically most people user in the middle of the field, if the user vacates the middle of the field, now you have, they don't typically have a lot of help to be able to defend this. And if they did have a lot of help, then that would mean that they're going to be in a defense that looks kind of something like what you see on your screen. So as you can see here, we have a ton of help in the middle of the field. So where are the holes in the cover two? Well, the holes in the cover two are to the sidelines. So if we were to run this double corner concept, you see here, they only have two defenders to the sideline. They're not going to be able to guard that unless they're doing what? Unless they're double flatting and moving resources from the middle of the field, right? So when we, when we talk about attacking the double flat, kind of back to that here, when we talk about attacking the double flat, we want to high low the middle of the field. So one of the other best ways to do this would be to have that, that skinny post or that deep, deep post route potentially be a one play score in the middle of the field. So the way we would do that is something like what you see on your screen. And now you have kind of this post that can be thrown in that deep middle area of the field. So in a, in a roundabout way, although it's kind of like a little bit of a stretch to see this, I want you to take a look at what we're doing with this route combo. We have our clear out or our streak deep middle of the field here. This is attacking that deep middle third. Then if we back this up and we look at the routes a little closer, we have this underneath middle of the field attacking route, which is attacking here and then kind of all the way through. And then we have our intermediate middle of the field read, which is going to be our post route. Another way that we can basically kind of arrive at the same thing would be to use a skinny post from a hot route master perspective to utilize a slot apprentice post and then to come back with a backside drag and the and then maybe run, you know, kind of whatever you want to run on the right here, probably some type of corner route, flat route. But you see, again, we're kind of creating this high low in the middle of the field and then we're obviously running around it. Another way that we can kind of um, really do the same basic thing is to ghost route the running back and then we're going to um, essentially hitch. We're going to hitch, we're going to post, we're going to flat, and then we're going to post. So see here, kind of same thing, high, low in the middle of the field consistently. This is really effective for attacking cover to those cover two coverages because the yellow zones, as you see, they just can't get to all of the spots that they need to to be able to defend you. So these are ways, again, we're just trying to manipulate different spots. So uh, typically what I like to say is your play should, in general, for the most part, be isolating certain spaces on the field. So like a streak, a crosser, and a drag, those routes, generally speaking, are going to attack the left side deep, the left side intermediate, and the left side flat. Then what can we put around that that's gonna be super effective? Well, probably something that's going to attack the backside intermediate route and maybe the backside flat. So for example, a curl route would be a perfect way to utilize this. And so you'll see here, whereas it puts that stress on that yellow defender, user has to stay on the curl, which allows you to throw that route right there. 
that is kind of the general principle for how we develop route combinations, creating compl routes that complement one another, create space for one another, and manipulate the user is like the biggest thing that I can tell you for creating your own route combinations in Madden. And you can apply this to no matter what formation that you're running. I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you want to get access to my full Jets offensive ebook, all of my ebooks are available for both Madden and for college football by joining our, page, or our um, school page. We used to be on Patreon. Our school page, uh, school.com slash Cody Ballard. The link to sign up for that is going to be down in the description below. $10 will get you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to sign up for the site, and get all that, head down to the description and uh, click the link down below.